<laughs> really? Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, that's right. It's Metal Wednesday. <laughs> Raghouse Radio created to empower women in music, business, entertainment, sports, all sorts of stuff. And I have two beautiful and talented ladies with me in the studio today. It's the Mel and Mel Show. <laughs> How many people do you... Confuse. How many people do you corn fuse with your names? You're two tiny little girls with luscious long locks. You're both metal rocking beasts. And your names start with the three first letters are like exactly the same. Like how does that mess up your super fans, ladies? Actually, almost every time I go out, somebody asks me where my base is. <laughs> almost every single time. <laughs> so please introduce yourselves. First off, we have the lovely... And fantastic. Oh, I'm Melody. Hi. What's your last name, Mel? Sean, my last name is Schoenfeld. Melody. Mm -hmm. Melody Schoenfeld. Mm -hmm. People get it right. So when you go see them at their concert, you'll you won't you won't confuse yourself. Okay. <laughs> and next, my lovely guest. And I am Melanie with the N. Hey, do you see this? That's my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie Cisneros. Mm -hmm. And is it, is it, yeah, I was just going to say, I have never, because you know I stalk all my guests before I, you guys come on the show, because I want to be prepared. I want to know what you guys have done. I want to know what you guys are up to. And I was looking at Melanie, right, and I was trying to add her on Facebook. I'm all, there is, damn it, there is no Melanie Cisneros. No, no. And then I look again, I'm like, dumbass. It's with an S. I've never seen Cisneros with an S ever in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I think someone got off the boat and misspelled it. Is that <laughs> so what it was? Chances are, if it's with an S, they're probably related to me, and they're probably from New Mexico. I, you're from <laughs> New Mexico? <gasps> what? What part of New Mexico? Mostly Albuquerque. But my in-laws are from New Mexico, and they're very, very particular. And I don't know a lot of people from New Mexico, so I'm digging it. So you said they're from Albuquerque? Yeah, or various small towns and villages. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What a small world it is. So ladies, these ladies are part of the fantastic band we call Ed Force One. Oh, yeah. And we even have a super fan who knew... Wait. Super fan. Come on over here, Ed. <laughs> super fan. Wave to the people, Ed. Say hey. Show them your tattoo. Yeah. Show them your tattoo, Ed. That's an awesome tattoo. There Look at go. that. Can you see that? Our slave. Every time I see him at a show, he doesn't speak to me. He just goes... Oh. <laughs> You're singing for me. You're singing for me. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Every show. I love this guy. Every show. So awesome. Ed just went on a beer run for Mela Nee. Because the girls were stuck in traffic. <laughs> we were. I'm so we sorry about work. that. Yeah, I'm so good. thankful that you guys came today. So thank you so much. Thank you for Thanks having for us. Having this us. is awesome. So um, I love tribute bands. I love women in tribute bands. So I'm excited about our segment tonight because both of you have a lot of experience. You're in multiple projects. Cheers. 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 Ding. Um, do you want some water, darling? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> right on. Right on. So let's dig in. Ed Force One, tell me how long this project has been around. Five years? Something like that. Yeah. We had our first show four years ago. I know because it came up on my Throwback Thursday thing. <laughs> um, yeah, five, five years we've been practicing. Yeah. And how, like, how did y'all get it together? How did you get the project together? How did you meet each other? Were you in some kind of, you know, metal family, just kind of knew each other? Because I feel like that's how a lot of this stuff works in the L.A. area. That's about how a lot of it works. Right? Uh, those guys all knew each other First. We were, most of Ed Force One, not all of it, most of us uh -huh. were in a band called Hangar 18, which was a Megadeth tribute. And, right on. Um, so our drummer Dave knew Melody and brought her in and when we became Ed Force One. Okay. Because yeah. Hangar 18 lost her Dave Mustaine. and yeah. What happened? Oh, he just quit playing. He's all, bye. <laughs> bye, Felicia, I'm done. Well, he's still playing, he's just not playing metal anymore. Yeah, he okay. quit playing Dave Mustaine. That's yeah. what I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, he got tired of that. Is yeah, he, like he doing original do, stuff he's now? Doing original, he's doing a great, okay. a great uh, project now, but he doesn't want to do tribute stuff anymore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Very that's fair. Very that's fair. Yeah. As long as, you know, I feel like there's an, there needs to be enough love for everyone in music to do whatever the hell they want to, whether it's 
pay tribute to an artist, whether it's their own original music, cover music, what whatever they want to do. Because the thing that I hate the most is the shit talkers and the haters. Mm -hmm. They're like, you shouldn't be doing that. Do your this. Yeah. You should do that. Why don't you do that? Like, hey, the, it takes a lot to make the world go round, right? The we need a bunch of different. For everything. You better be. believe there it. Be. The tribute scene gets a lot of flack. You know? It really does. It does. It's like love or hate. It, yeah, it it's one of those things where people say, if you're in the tribute scene, you're you don't have talent. You can't. You're write a copycat. Your you're exactly. right. Um, the fact of the matter is, most of us also write um, our original stuff. It is really hard to get an original band out there, number one. Especially you mean to be life. successful, like have commercial success? To, or to, have, to, be to even get a gig, right? really, to yeah. get any sort of a decent gig. Any it's, kind it's of paying hard, gig where you exactly. don't have to pay to play. I mean, right? it's hard enough to do it as a tribute, but it's easier as a tribute. And then, you know, also, a lot of the original artists you see out there did not write their own songs. Somebody else wrote it for them. But not only that, girl, but yeah. when those original artists make it and they go on tour, guess what? They play covers. Well, not <laughs> only that, but usually they have musicians that get picked they, and like, hey, you got to learn this new artist's music. Exactly. Okay, so they're, they're a paid musician. They didn't exactly. create anything. No. They're on tour exactly. with an artist who may or may not have written their original exactly. mu their own original music, exactly. right? That's what I mean. Like, It's so easy for people to stand in and, yeah. and judgment, and mm -hmm. I, I just want to... This is a forum for every kind of music, whatever yeah. people are feeling, mm -hmm. especially if it's female fronted, yeah. because we're all about girl power here. <laughs> and we love our boys that support us, but I, you know, this is really to lift up and focus on our female mm -hmm. talent in the yeah. area because um, there's not enough of us like uplifting each other. So yeah. I love that part of my job. I love my job because I get to sit with some <laughs> really cool chicks. And we get to sit with you. I know. Yay. It's like, party. we get to have beers. And I can say fuck because <laughs> it's not FM. It's on the internet. Yeah, so I can yeah. do whatever I want to nice. for one hour. Nice. <laughs> so, and that's, and the other thing I was going to say was um, on the, the tribute perspective, the you know the haters, you know on the tribute perspective, you should write your own originals and all that good stuff. What they don't realize for tribute and cover bands mm -hmm. is how ridiculously difficult it is to learn and mimic somebody else's music, yeah. someone else's behavior, yeah. like you know their isms, their personality, their stage presence, like yeah. to really do it well. And people spend hours and months and years perfecting that you know yeah. and I, I so much respect for those people that have really you know they've cornered the market and they do it well and they take pride in it so I don't have much tolerance for haters girl I know well and that's one of the interesting things about Ed Force One because let me let's be honest nobody thinks I'm Bruce Dickinson Sure. <laughs> people, people think I'm still, Melanie. But, but you can still pay Melanie. tribute to but a I fantastic can, band, yeah, right? Yeah, I have a little bit, I guess a little bit more leeway just because people aren't expecting me to be a replica. Right. Um, but, you know, I do my best to have his energy um, and his range mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the costume changes. And the costume changes. <laughs> and the costume changes. So, How yeah. many costume changes do you have? Show? I have, I have the, um, the Lucha Libre mask. And I have the um, the trooper jacket and the flag, and I have my 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 Air Force hat and all that stuff. A little flight hat for a little flight hat. hat that I makes survive. Dave crack up every time I put it on. <laughs> Can we hear her better now? You guys are you able? Oh, to, I'm sorry. You guys able to hear Mel? I'm very small, and I have Mel to, Oh, you know what? I wasn't talking into the right part of the microphone. No, I also didn't have your volume up too high, so I wanted to. I just want to make sure everyone can hear hear you out there. You can't call us Mel S and Mel S because <laughs> you can't do the Spice I'm, Girl thing. I, I was trying. I'm trying. I'm gonna come up with something before the night's over. Mel D and Mel Ni. I don't know. Mel we're, C and Mel. We're gonna ha we're gonna have to do something because it's just too it's too funny not. Too. So what's up? So who are the other members in Ed Force One? We've got Mel and Mel, Dave and Dave and Mike. We who we <laughs> and Mike's gonna need to change his name to Dave or Mel, I think, probably. He should at some point. D yeah. Mike D we're yeah, we're gonna have to work on his <laughs> name too. And the boys were busy tonight, huh? The boys were busy tonight. They they're like too much estrogen. They're too we're scared. They're a little too good for we're us. We're scared. Now. They're just scared of all the girls. They're a little too loud. <laughs> That's cool. They're I get scared it. of the girls. They're in the wrong band. I know, right? <laughs> so they're not Although scared. They're pretty scary. They're I mean. not scary. Well, you can be scary. <laughs> so if you guys know Mel, 
you know that she is like what are you like 103 about 105 about 105 she's a little nugget she's <laughs> cute little cute little nugget right but she's super fit she's super <laughs> strong and as i was researching today i saw you share a a, a news article about how you're like top 10 vegan athletes like that's interesting that uh, no one ever asked or talked to you about that I before it got published right <laughs> <laughs> but apparently i am a famous vegan athlete. that I'm is vegan. absolutely <laughs> amazing because although i'm not vegan and i'm i'm my my diet is loosely based is a loosely plant-based diet that's uh, how i'm gonna call my diet i sure. wouldn't call it like vegetarian or whatever i eat meat rarely mm -hmm. but if i see something and I feel like picking at it, I will. Um, but I live with a vegetarian, oh. and she's trying to be vegan. But the cheese and the honey mm -hmm. are the two toughest things. Although she uses a lot of, um, you know, the diet the product. Yeah. Di yeah. Like so she stuff. she uses a and she digs it like she's yeah, totally into it. I think the hardest thing for her, and you tell me your experience, is when she's out socially. It's other people's expectations of what she's eating that yeah. it's like a big mind blowing thing like people get offended yeah. people get uncomfortable it's like because you're doing making certain choices they get uncomfortable about yeah. themselves it's the weirdest thing well i'm you know i i i'm vegan for animal rights reasons and i don't like to get into anybody else's face about it it's um you know it's a choice and it right. was my choice and i Correct. think of it as a religion you don't get into other people's face with your religion and i don't get into people's face face or faith no. <laughs> with your, uh, with your but um but the thing about it is is in the strength and conditioning community which is my other life uh -huh. I am surrounded by people who hate vegans like, why hate us. why you know in some ways they're 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 they have every right to because there's a lot of vegans out there who are not like there's Stereotypes exist for a reason. It's because some people live up to them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of vegans who live up to that bad vegan stereotype. Like they, as in bad diet? The, as in or... they're screaming at you. Oh. As in they're in your face. They're telling you you're a bad person. Like they're stop moral. eating animals. Yeah, if you're eating animals, you're a bad person. Okay. They're morally superior. And I don't feel like that's really doing them any favors. Uh -huh. you know, I, I get see. how they feel, but it's not doing them any favors for promoting their cause. Okay. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the people who think that if they eat soy, they're going to grow breasts and, um, and get cancer and, get cancer and, and also, um, vegans are weak and lame and unhealthy uh, interesting. and, you know, I'm very, very scientific. I do a lot of research on nutrition and a lot of writing and things like that. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually publishing a cookbook right now that's half nutrition. I science. can't <laughs> wait. What, how long do I have to wait for this goddamn book? It depends on how quickly I can get all the photographs done. It's, <sighs> it's being edited right now and I had it. Oh, it's um, close then. It's very close and I had it kind of the, the nutrition science part. I had it looked over by two very high level non-vegan nutrition experts okay. just to make sure I'm putting out the best um, information possible because okay. I don't want it to I don't want it to be biased I want it to be truthful mm -hmm. and I want it to be usable for for anybody um, so I don't I feel like that's something that's been lacking is an unbiased scientific look hmm. at how to properly implement a vegan diet and and to break the myths on both both ends because there's myths on both ends both. I can't uh, speak today. <laughs> I, gonna, I, want, I would like a signed copy of your of your book. Done. Please. If uh, it's electronic yes. copy, do I just like, <laughs> you have e signature? E signature. No, I guess I'll, I'll send have it with to, a picture of me doing no, this. No, I'm gonna have to come to a show with <laughs> yes, Ed. Yes. And w as he's flashing you oh, his shoulder, oh, yes. I'm gonna sneak the book up, see, so and with a sharpie, so you can yes. sign well, it. Well, you know, I'll bring a little <laughs> tattoo pen, and I'll just I'll sign some boobs. Yes! <laughs> I got them, girl. I got them. Yes. The soy. But I'll never hold. Yeah, I eat lots of soy. Yeah, you know, I used to be a guy until I ate some tofu and now this is, this is what happened. Wait, so I want I want to play some music of this band we keep on talking oh, about. Yes. These so, are really old recordings from when we first got together. Oh. So Rach, you ready with one? Can we play one of their one of their songs, pretty please? Which one's first? Let's do it. Let's do it. I like that one because I get to scream. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to sing along. <laughs> yeah. 
Yay! God, I haven't heard this in a long time. <laughs> was amazing and so while we're sitting here listening um the girls are complaining about how old the recording is and how they need to redo it i'm like damn that sounds like awesome to me and they're like Ugh, i'm cringing and melanie was cringing actually physically cringing as she was listening to it and they were starting to talk about oh we gotta re-record this i haven't heard this in so long i can't believe it interesting huh when you revisit something that you've done many many moons later yeah so when the girls got here earlier we were talking about other projects that they were in mm -hmm. and Melanie was sharing with me that she's been in a few projects and <laughs> Melody quipped that Melanie actually was one of the founding members of the Iron Maidens mm -hmm. right tell me about how that all went down who you and who else who started that project up when did that go down? 
Well, that was way back in the early 2000s. Okay. Uh, me and and a friend of mine who we had a an Iron Maiden tribute called Wrath Child, uh -huh. and it was me. Uh, this my singer was Jenny Jenny Warren, and some guys, and we were playing Iron Maiden, uh -huh. and we were playing at this place called well, it's now the Gas Lamp. I forgot what it was was called back in the day. Oh, in Long Beach. And was that something else before? Yeah, it was, oh. what was it called before? Live bait. It was called oh. live bait before. I Maybe someone know. listening will know. And so, we were, we were playing at live bait, and after we got off stage, I got approached by Linda McDonald, who was like, oh, uh. we're looking for a bass player to tour with Phantom Blue, this original uh, girl oh, they had. Oh, yeah. And they're like, you know, would you be interested in doing this? And so, they had the guitar player from Phantom Blue, Josephine, and Linda, we all started talking, and Jenny got this idea, and she's like, oh, you know what? I wonder if those guys would be interested in doing an all-girl oh Iron Maiden goodness. tribute. So we recruited them. We, we got another guitar player, Sarah Marsh, and put together an all-female tribute to Iron Maiden called the Iron Maidens. And Unbelievable. Like, the, the most successful tribute band of all time. Can you even effing believe that? As all her man. Can you believe it? <laughs> Jenny, I, I give a lot of And Jenny. I'm Jenny. just Jenny. saying, like, even to, who, like, regardless, to be a part of something like that, that, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, talking at a concert and coming up with brainstorming an idea and making it happen. And look what's happened over, like, how long has it been? I mean, we're talking, you know, 15 years. Yeah. That band's been in existence. Jenny's amazing because Jenny's like an idea person. Uh, Jenny just she gets ideas and she's she's just like constantly firing off ideas. Oh, um, we have to get her on the show. She's yeah. awesome. I want yeah. her coming on Rag House well, with me. We're putting together a new project with her. Tell so. me about your new project, ladies. We don't know much about it ourselves. <laughs> it's a work in, it's a in progress, but it's all, whip. It's gonna That's be what it original. Is, whip. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's an original project. Okay. We're going to do some covers, but it's going to be mostly originals. Right on. And it's going to have two, it's all girl, all girl project, okay. two singers. Tell me why you chose all girl, because you guys have some successful mixed projects. So what's the, tell me about the all girl thing. You know, really, um. There's a different vibe. It's, yeah. In it's all girl different. band. Is and there? I, you know, I just got out of a uncomfortable situation with another band. Uh-huh. And I felt like it was time for an energy change. Ah, and so the male energy kind of, is that what it was? Was it male energy? I don't even know that it's necessarily a gender-related energy. It was oh, just, just the person. Oh, it was just, just an energy people. I needed to get myself oh, okay. out of. And, okay, um, and good so, for you. Um, yeah. And good I'm, for you. I'm glad to be away from that. And um, it, just, it was just time for, for something different. And so this is actually going to be pretty fun because um, we've got two singers, two female singers. Uh -huh. going to do a lot oh of Oh my god, yeah. just killing it. Yeah, and Jenny's got the more like kind of gritty like her and you know, and I've got the more melodic thing. Okay. And so we're going to be doing a lot of duets oh and kind of back god, and forth. Amazing. And we're going to have two bass players. Well, okay, I have it. <laughs> wow, that's mind blowing. So how does that even work? How what are is there a ba what's a band that you can compare that to those two bass players? Uh they're we don't know. They're actually going to work. <laughs> we're going to see we're gonna there make it work. one or two. There been no um Spinal Tap had two bass players. Oh, okay. well, they, they did for the bottom. Win. They yeah. did the song where everybody played bass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? What's cool about the bass? So you guys have to cover that song, we basically. Do. Okay. <laughs> we might have to. Yeah, there but, used to be an all-female tribute to Spinal Tap. There was, and they were good, too. What happened to them? I don't know, they disappeared. Oh, yeah. Girls, where they did you so go? Good. Where did you go? I saw some video of them. They were amazing. Didn't they play with us at no, Paladino's? No, they never played with us. Oh, must have been we amazing. played with um, Bonfire at Paladino's. That was our first show there. I have played with them one I can't remember which band it was with, yeah. but yeah. So, okay, so you have this new project yeah. starting up. Do you have all your members yet? Are you still looking for members? members. Okay, yeah. you've got we, all your members. I was on a hunt for a while. For, you know, we wanted two guitar players for the longest time, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I met this bass player, Vashti, who I, I just got a great vibe off of her, and mm -hmm. I was like, can we do two bass players? Because I would really like to have her in the project. That's right. And so she's, she, so she's in, and we're going to. So the cool thing about two bass players is one bass can double the other bass mm -hmm. or harmonize with the other bass mm -hmm. or it can be kind of like a rhythm guitar so we can play around with that a lot so it should be fun. Oh my it's not gosh. something a lot of other people are doing so I think well, it we, be fun. Well we were hard pressed to think of another band that yeah. used two bass. So I know there's you're one absolutely I can't right. think of the name of it. It's like a, I think it'll come to you. Band 
It'll come to you yeah. as yeah. we're chatting. Yeah. So original part. Now, who writes the music and like who's doing the writing? Well, it's funny because after um, after all the stuff went down with the other band I was in, I started writing music like you would not believe. Uh, um, I had a fire. Written, oh man, I haven't nice. written music like that in ages, Amazing. and um, it's all good. So I've got eight full lyrics done. Um, I wish I did in like a week. And, wow. uh, and I've got like a cell phone full of little snippets that I I need to get into a song. And oh so, my God. Yeah. So you have a lot of stuff to start with. So you got to get this band together so yeah. you can start creating. Yeah, exactly. Right? And we're all coming in with our own little riffs. And I we're love just it. Build on it. Oh my God. Good luck. Keep yeah. me posted on that because that's very exciting. Yeah. I can't wait. I'll be under the front row going, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. We're excited about it. I'm, I'm excited to see how it comes together. Yeah. So, have you done uh, many original projects in the past? I've done a few. Mel, yeah. Uh, the you last, um, I did uh, probably one of my favorite original bands I did was a band called Crescent Shield. Um, and it was power metal. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, look at her. She had a my, physical my reaction. Best child friend, my best childhood friend was the singer for that band, and he passed away. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. That's actually how I kind of met a lot of these guys. Oh, my that was goodness. Memorial service. How long yeah. ago was that? Five years ago. Oh, yeah. so you girls go way back. Yeah. You have been playing together and been in the, running in the same circles yeah. for quite some time now. Yeah. It's a small metal world. It, it is. is. And is that so when you say it's a small metal world, is this based in LA? Does it include Orange County and all of SoCal? Or is it, you know, are there little pockets? SoCal. It's all of Southern it's California. Everywhere. Really. But most of them are in Orange County, it kind of feels like, huh? Really? And a lot of the venues are there too. I was going to say, is that where a lot of your work is mm -hmm. in metal yeah, as we play, well? We play out there. Because it's a very loyal crowd. It is. It's and a, you know, it's you know? underground. It's not like real mainstream, but there's a some great metal but when you're on the scene when you play music mm -hmm. when you're in a musician like when you're a musician in socal to me i'm not in a metal band but it feels like a very strong presence yeah a very strong presence so it's interesting yeah that you're saying that yeah you know yeah well you know it's strong when you're in it but like i think you don't it, I, saw, <laughs> I saw this video um last week where uh two guys saw each other in a supermarket wearing metal shirts and it was like they were running through a metal holding hands and you know and and that's kind of how it is because you don't like run into a lot of metal fans unless you hang out in those circles it mm -hmm. seems like at least in this country you go outside this country and it's everywhere but in this country oh, it's like people are more into pop or you know other types of music that is so so yeah. when i see you know all the venues I book for my band, so I'm always researching. I'm always looking out bands that are similar to mine and doing the same types of gigs, but bands that aren't, you know? And so I see all these different venues, and when I see metal shows pop up, the numbers are huge. Yeah. So that so what you're telling me, it doesn't make sense in my brain, right? Because in my brain, I'm thinking metal has a really strong presence. Yes. And you're saying it's a small and loyal it's crowd. It's a small and loyal right? crowd, and it is a beautiful crowd because you have all of these people with very differing views on life but they have that this, brings them together they have this thread in common mm -hmm. and it's it's awesome that's bitching yeah. that's cool to be a part yeah. of isn't it yeah i love that I yeah love with that. all the shit that's happening with politics and all that stuff you need that. You need That's that. That's the one fun. thing that connects us always, yeah. right, is music. Music heals, man. It heals in so many ways. You're so right. So. You know, I teach mm -hmm. students, and the thing that I tell their parents, like, besides the obvious, which is you're giving such a gift to your child by putting them in music lessons because it's rewiring their mm -hmm. brain. It's teaching them how to problem solve. They're yeah. learning a new language. They're expressing their creativity. Like, there's all these... You know finite things that we can actually measure but beyond that like this is something that will soothe their spirit It will give them something if they if they're going through a hard time in their life You know which they will many many times mm -hmm. right they'll have something to grab onto besides drugs yeah. or Horrible relationships yeah. or alcohol or whatever, you know yeah. besieges us as we go through mm -hmm. life There's this other positive outlet regardless and yeah. I I feel like that's how I can connect with people that I'm very different from. Mm -hmm. You know, we have many differences politically, right. you know, whatever, right. you know, but there, this thing, it seems people that come to our shows, 
that were connected by the music and that's such a wonderful feeling to have and that's cool that your metal community yeah. is strong in that way. It's awesome. You know, regardless yeah, of awesome. all the differences. It's I'd awesome. love to hear that. Yeah. And how are the women in metal? Great. I love the women in metal oh my. because they are they are very uplifting. They are. Anytime I like, you know, run into women out there, they're just like, Go girl, yeah. go I love and they're that. Yeah. See? That's amazing. Yeah. Because that's not that's not normal. It's not because, you know, in in my experience, you know, I always had guy friends. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends growing up because the the girls didn't want to talk to me. Like it, it was a very strange thing. It was a lot of cattiness. Yeah, a lot of people odd. talked behind my back. They saw me as some kind of weird competition. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have a lot of female friends, um, especially in college. Um, and um, and then even when I moved out here, a lot of the really close female friends that I made ended up turning on me for Turned whatever. Really like well. they used yeah. me for uh -huh. you know because I tend to be a little bit too trusting and a little bit too giving and so they get stuff they want from me and, and when they got done. that they don't need it anymore so yeah that's and true that happens quite a bit it happens a lot that happens a bit yeah. I have some people have that school of thought of I'll be cautious I don't know I don't yeah. know you yet right yeah and there's those of us like I'm similar to you I'm like hey girl yeah. let's do what you okay right. sure right. you're all open-hearted right. and it's like you give an opportunity for people to do Stop that to you, you. Yeah. the thing with me then my Italian comes out and I'm like oh oh oh, oh no girl I will <laughs> cut you yeah you are dead to me. Yeah. Sleep with the fishes. <laughs> like, d stay out of my way, or I will hurt you. Yeah. With, you know, then that's not good either. Yeah. But like, I the way I approach people is open-hearted, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, some people take advantage of that. But I still think it's worth it. I think it's worth the risk. We have the best friends. Because out of you still pick up, even if it's yeah. one out of ten, yeah. you still pick up those people that are true. You know, right? I feel like one good person makes up for 10 bad ones. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like that with all of our brainstorming and our fantastic ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe one out of 10 will be feasible, but if that one might be the one, yeah. right? So I'm okay with that. I'm, it's all a numbers game. Having I'm this cool microphone in front of me makes me realize how fidgety I am, because every time I move, it goes, you're all clunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you do with your mic when you're on stage? You hold it? Well, when I have my mic on stage, I'm running all over the place. Uh, I'll run into the audience. I jump all over the place, so I don't have to worry about that. So Melody Conk. needs an Iron Maiden fidget spinner. I do. <gasps> Did you what? hear about that dude? Is there such a thing? No. Probably. <laughs> but did you hear about that dude in Germany? He yeah. had a fidget spinner. Oh, those things are annoying me. But anyway, he yes. had a fidget spinner, and I guess it wasn't spinning fast enough for him, and he wanted to see how fast he could make it go. Mm -hmm. So he took one of those air blower thingies, and he started using that on it, and it went so fast that it exploded in his hand and split his finger open. No. So stay away from fidget, sp uh, fidget spinners, But those kids. are the rage. I was <laughs> just going to suggest... You get someone to manufacture Ed Force One fidget spinners and sell them at your show. Everyone's gonna have a fidget spinner, <laughs> and they could be like LD, LED light ups, and they'll spin them, and it'll be like no. old school, you know, like the lighters. No, no? Oh, all right, all right. I'll keep. I, I can't say I understand them. I don't. At all. Oh. They seem like they would be amusing for like five minutes, and then you're like, all right, moving on. I volunteer at a school during the school year to, with literacy, mm -hmm. and um, I was in the room, and one of the kids in the room had had one of those, and he wasn't paying attention to anything except the. Well, that's the thing. Like at my son's school, he's still in elementary school. Yeah. He's starting sixth grade this year, but they banned them. Like you can't you have, have them to. in class. And the point of them is for kids with ADD to have something to do, but I think it ends up you just do that and you don't pay it's attention. It's kind of like pe else. people with fake service dogs. Yes. Like right, like yes. everyone gets a fake, whatever, and yes. they all now they're all service dogs, but like probably ten percent actually all need dogs them. Are service dogs. I know. I am so happy. Like every day. Right. <laughs> the, I totally agree. And when I hug my dog and I'm all irritated when I walk in the door, maybe from traffic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my god, hi, BB, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm instantly fine. <laughs> and so it's true. Yeah. They really work. They're amazing. You're absolutely right. But it's that same premise, right? It's mm -hmm. like gluten intolerance and yeah. and service dogs and everyone needing spinners. Don't get me started on the gluten intolerance. Oh. <laughs> do, I, do you think that's a thing? It's a thing. It's a trendy thing. No, there's, there is or a such trend. a thing. There is such a thing as gluten intolerance. Absolutely. Um, but the number of people who actually have it are not the number of people who claim to have it. Right. Uh, and, and so how do you even, like, and when you talk to people that claim to be gluten intolerant, 
they get super funky. Well, look, if it's and, working for them, good for them. Right. But don't, I kind of feel like you shouldn't claim to have a disease you don't have. Um, is that celiac disease? Celiac is that... disease is a bit different. It oh, is a gluten different. intolerance, but okay. it's a severe gluten intolerance. Okay. Whereas gluten intolerance means you might have some side effects when you eat gluten. With celiac, you have some major side effects when you eat gluten, and there's no way you should not. You should just stay away from it. Like you can't. To yeah. Like you really can't you tolerate really it. Can't tolerate yeah. it. Whereas yeah. gluten intolerance is a bit milder than that, and there's degrees of that. And you know, there's degrees of, of celiac as well. But um, and I've heard this is what I heard too. Someone talking about gluten intolerance. I know we're off track. Music. <laughs> I'm, I have Metal and gluten. <laughs> <laughs> I have no contribution to conversation. <laughs> well, you're drinking gluten right you now. Are. Okay. Just, no. <laughs> they talk about so we know health. that we don't have a gluten intolerance here. No, Stage no. right. I will have everybody else's gluten. Uh, someone said something about the reason why numbers are gaining with gluten intolerance. It's not um, that people are faking it. It's the way that the that wheat is being... I don't know, grown or, you know, what I, you know, what I, and, and like talk about research to be able to have any type of conversation, yeah. knowledgeable conversation, re, you know, yeah. informed conversation. You have to go so deep. Yeah. I don't have time to go that deep. Yeah. So I just have to listen to people and just take their word for it. Cause I, I don't have time. Look, the, you know, the, to the dig story into it. is if you eat it and you don't feel good, don't eat it. Be don't it. eat it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so make a thing about it. Just like your, just like your vegan thing mm -hmm. right yeah you don't need to just do it you don't need to talk yeah, about it you exactly. don't need to tell anyone else to do it just do it for yourself it. right Make it happen. I love it mm -hmm. okay so let's get back to Melanie because it's so interesting all of your experience with tribute bands before Ed Force One we already talked about the Maidens but you also talked about another all-girl tribute which I'm super interested in of course and the name of that band that you're currently in right is Whole Lot of Rosies that's one of them. I've got two. What? And, oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, wait, I want to get to that one next. Okay. Because that one's exciting, too. So, Whole Lot of Rosies, tribute to ACDC, mm -hmm. right? How long has that band been around? That band has been around for a very, 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 very long time. Like, longer than, like, before you started yeah. Iron Maidens? Yeah. That, well, Like, yeah. that's 2002, so how long ago? Well, the band, by the time I joined it, it was like version 3.0 or ah. 3.5, somewhere around then. So it has been around in many different iterations. Like 90s? Like, like, like probably late nineties. Oh wow! Ish. And is that when the tribute scene really started? Like, what? Who? How can we date back to the first this tribute thing? What do you think? Mm. What started it? I, you know, because I wasn't part of the the starting lineup uh -huh. of Whole Lot of Rosies. Yeah. I joined later on. Um, I can't say what the tribute scene was like when it started. Yeah. I do know that you were there close to the beginning, though, girl. Yeah. Early 2000s, you were there. <laughs> you know, the, the, the really neat thing about Whole Lot of Rosies is being all girl ACDC, we had some fantastic opportunities. Like, we did a tour of Korea for the troops. We did wow. a, there was, we went to Baumholder, Germany, where they were doing a send off party for a lot of the troops. They were going to Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh my goodness. So they had a big kind of festival uh -huh. and a whole lot of rosies headlined that festival wow and we've played in puerto rico we've played in uh, japan international so it, you know we've had a lot of really really we play we do a lot of bike fests those are um, so fun those are my favorite <laughs> bikers are my favorite audience they are sweet. They're hearts. so fun. They're so sweet. <laughs> you know, they come, they're big burly, and they come these big hogs, yeah. and they call them boys, and they're just like the sweetest people yeah. ever. And the chicks are just like, they don't give up. They don't give it. They don't care. They're like, they're going to have a good time. They're totally digging it. They're totally into it. Like, they're, I, lo I love the vibe. I love the energy at bike runs. Like, it's so fun. So, you, so a whole lot of roses that, and you're still in that band. So, that's been around for, when did you start playing with that band? Uh, I'm not sure. It's a long time. It, you know, it all starts to kind of blur in, but it's oh. probably sometime in the mid 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> so at least ten years. Yeah. At least a decade. You've been playing with the girls. Yeah, yeah. We've been playing for a while. We just did the uh, summer solstice in Santa Monica. They have a street right fair. And, so. Bitch, and are are is it a Southern California based band? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're right here. Yeah. Cause I thought there was a an another all female ACDC band. Right, but they're based in the Pacific Northwest. Right, that's and is, uh, is that, Hell's Bells. Oh, that's a whole other one, because you said your band and another band, like, kind of separated, and someone else started. 
another right there's, right tell me about that uh, well yeah there's another band called thunderstruck that was used to be part of a lot of roses and then they split off so Got it. they're both still in the la area so there's at least three acdc all female acdc mm-hmm. tribute band and you're all successful and working am i right I mean, yeah. is everyone busy yeah i think so so this is why i wanted to talk about this so because we were talking about women uplifting each other especially in the metal community there's a lot of competition there can there can be a lot of negativity at times um, with that competition it's not necessarily healthy competition which is a bummer but that kind of proves and I always say this there is enough work in the marketplace for everyone everyone right mm-hmm. even those top tributes that um, you know they all say okay these don't, don't do one of these don't be a journey tribute band don't be an ACDC, don't be a Led Zeppelin, don't be a, you know, whatever. There's a million of these bands already. Don't do it. Like, Or let's say, you know, some of the big booking agencies will tell you, we do not need any of these bands. Don't even submit, right? Well, we do run into a lot of that, though, because I do most of the booking for Red Horse One, and uh-huh. I run into that all the time where people are like, we already have Iron Maiden, we don't need more Iron Maiden. Right. And as I do, I do also, but I... Mm-hmm. It, even though I get that all the time, and booking my cover band or my tribute band... I get mostly no's, right? Mm-hmm. Again, it's a numbers game. Yeah, I'll get you know eight or nine no's for mm-hmm. every one yes. Mm-hmm. But my band is insanely busy, right? You girls are very busy. Mm-hmm. You're making things happen. So I still believe that there's enough room for everyone in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you just expand your marketplace to reach outside of the LA basin. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have to travel a bit, like you were saying. There's a lot of international work out there. There's a lot of work in other states besides right here, especially for the tribute scene. Mm -hmm. Like Texas has a lot of opportunities. Arizona has a lot of opportunities for trips. Nevada, Pacific Northwest, you know, there there's opportunities everywhere. Now does Ed Force One travel a lot or you guys stay local? We play Vegas, but that's about it. So do you prefer is that by design? No. Do you want to stay local? We'll play play anywhere that wants us and that okay and that that cover our expenses. Right. Book us and we will come. Yes. Right on. <laughs> See, that is the attitude. That is yeah. the attitude, girls. Oh, we love playing Iron Maiden. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, we you talked about kind of the metal scene. Mm-hmm. No, nobody is more passionate than Iron Maiden fans. Fans, mm-hmm. right? And me being a big Iron Maiden fan and the rest of the band being such huge yeah. Iron Maiden fans, to sit there and, and play music that you love yeah. with people that love the music. It's, that's bitchin', it's right? That's why I've been playing Iron Maiden tribute So forever. long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it, and I love the people. And, you know, and I had someone tell me, you know, there's no bigger or heavier metal fan than Metallica fans, and they can be the most, uh, they can be difficult, too, for the tribute scene. Well, if you don't do it well. Yes. Yeah. Right? I guess we've been doing a pretty good job. (laughs) (laughs) You have to have a thick skin in this tribute scene for many, many reasons. So, and that's what I was going to, when I was, I was about to ask you. Do you feel like you need to love the band, um, be passionate about that band to be in a tribute band? Well, why would you want to pay tribute to a band you weren't passionate about? Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, like if you don't love singing it, then why would you? Why would you do it, right? Why would you want to I feel like if you're not really passionate about the music you're doing, Mm -hmm. you're not going to do as good a job. Uh, Anything Mm -hmm. outside of music, anything in life, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what brought me to music. Mm -hmm. You know, I flipped my whole script, changed my entire life, Mm -hmm. because I was missing music. I keep on, I would always tell my friends, I feel like I was hibernating for a moment, you know, a decade Mm -hmm. or so, kind of, you know, jumped into the corporate world, raised my family, Mm -hmm. but it was always there, but I just kind of sleeping bear Mm -hmm. (laughs) syndrome, and at a certain point, I'm like, I can't, like, it's not me, like, I'm not being my authentic self. Mm-hmm. I need to get back to this music, whatever that looks like, and that's been part of my journey. What yeah. is my musical journey like? What, where is my passion? Where's my heart? Okay. But just music in general, mm-hmm. like I feel like most of us are in it because of that reason, yes. right? Yeah. So that's kind of what brings us together. Hey, listen, I want to hear more of Ed Force One. Rach, you got any? Got some more music for us back there? Oops. <laughs> Nice, Ed Force One.
My ears are sweaty. I think I'm sweaty. I'm sweaty. So we have like 15 minutes left. Okay. So I want to talk about the shows you girls have coming up for sure, right? Yes, I'm muted. Okay, good. And um, that's my. This is my thing. I always forget to mute and unmute. Yes. Yeah, she, oh, she's almost okay. done. Oh, I'm good. It's good. Totally good. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I want to talk about that, especially your animal rescue benefit, which is bitching. So you have several gigs coming up. Yeah. And what else do you guys want to hit before we break? I mean, I've got that other original project. I, well, that that and we're gonna end. I want to end on that note. That now, that what's the name of that? Three ring. Three ring. Yeah. And that's like, and that's two vocalists, male and female, because that's um, what it sounded like. It like, is on that song, and then okay. it, there's gonna be more like that on the next album. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's a current project of yours, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Sweet. Yeah. And I couldn't play it because I don't have. Oh. I took like you know Apple whatever it. What do you like? Where you rent like basically? Yeah, I don't have it's that. It's on YouTube. It's on. So I couldn't play Amazon. the link, but she could. Oh, she, she had can. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I got to listen, oh. but she had it. Um, I'm like putting my foot down. Like I'm not renting music. Like, damn it! I want to own it. You know what? I felt that way, and then did you change your mind? And then I got Apple Music, and I I'm just Apple like music. loving the crap out of it. Uh, I because Apple. you could literally play any Make whatever you like want. I'm still a I like to buy CDs kind yeah. of person. I like the smell of CDs. I like the look of CDs on the wall uh -huh. kind of thing. But Apple Music has just been freaking awesome. The, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it more than Spotify or any of the other ones. That's the best one. Oh, it's God. like in the morning, they have this thing, it's like in the recommendations, today's albums. I'm like, okay, what am I going to listen to while I shower? That's right. Right. <laughs> It has favorites, it has um, new music for you, which isn't always fun, but, you know. You know Everyone I talk to, they absolutely love it. I'm like, no, not renting my music, no, no, no. Well, I, I like stopping. the way it looks at everything that's on your hard drive, and it uploads it to the cloud. So like all my scary demos and whatever, that's all in the cloud too. And I can get it on devices where I don't have a lot of disk space, uh, or my work computer where I don't want to download crap. <laughs> but is, cl is the cloud different? That's separate from Apple Music, well, it's, right? Well, it's part of it because it, it adds it to your library. Okay. You have like an online library, and you can take albums that you like and add them to your library. And then plus it has whatever you have in iTunes adds to your library. Because okay, so for me, like let's say we're learning a new song, and I'll download it. And then I'll move it into like any tune or something where I can slow it down, change the pitch, or whatever. But I can't do that with the Apple. That you can't do because you're the DRM. Mean, I can't manipulate it to use it to practice and whatnot. And that doesn't happen a lot. But that's what. And then I stop myself. I'm like, I'm not going to buy songs and then rent music too. Is, are we close? I'm almost done. I still buy CDs. You do. <laughs> I have Apple Music. I still buy CDs. If I like it, I'll buy it. Yeah. Damn, who's your guitarist? Uh, this was Marty and Michael. I don't know who was playing that one. <laughs> I don't know if that was Marty or Michael on that solo. Yeah, we need to re-record that. <laughs> See, I told you guys, they're sitting here the whole time thinking, who did that? Who did that? Wait, who was playing on that? Oh, we got to re-record re this. So what studio would you use if you guys went in to re-record? You know, we use a mobile, uh, I don't, if he's still, I hope he's still in business, but we use a mobile uh, recording guy who's awesome. He comes to he you? He comes to us and he's got like, oh, what? Man. Yeah, he's awesome. Oh, we got we to gotta shout out yeah, to I'm him. Gonna, you got to tell me his up. name I'm when you, it up. yeah. Awesome. For sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about where Ed Force One is going to be because you guys have several shows coming up, we right? Do. So we have August 5th at the Orange County Fair, one of my yes. favorite venues so ever. Fun. I love the fair. I've been going to the fair yeah. my entire life. Yeah. I like it better than LA Fair, yeah. any other fair. I just love it. Yeah. It's so August 5th. Paid fair. Right? <laughs> I love it. All oh the fried God. food you can eat and also I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> so what time is the show? August noon. 5th. And, and August 5th, yeah. what is that? Is that a Sunday? That's a Saturday. Saturday. Saturday noon on the hangar stage. Oh my God, stage. it's perfect. Yeah. No, but, no one, nothing else is going on. Yeah, nothing else is You must case. go down to the fair that day. There's really and no see, excuses. There are like no excuses. Whatsoever. 
It was fun because last year we played the fair and it was totally raining. It was raining and so, it was like a Thursday. What? So everybody <laughs> came in, you know, yeah. they're eating their hot dogs and yeah. everything. And, they, you know, it's like people who obviously oh, are yeah. Iron Maiden fans yeah. coming in and checking us out. And people who definitely were cool. not <laughs> Iron Maiden fans came in and checked us out too, which was pretty cool. How could you tell? Uh, you can tell by the looks on their faces. <laughs> they're like, what's happening? <laughs> That's the best. Oh, your phone has a low battery. Uh-oh. We'll see if we can make it last for nine minutes. That's what she said. We're just going to take it. Oh, <laughs> you're so naughty, girl. I love it. You're welcome. You're welcome. For that. She has good, she has good, but I'm bummed. <laughs> she has good one-liners, people. Okay, so August 5th at the Orange County Fair. Then you're heading down to Temecula. We are. Boiler Room, Boiler. August 16th. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone on the lineup with Motor you? Motor Breath is We are playing with Motor Breath and an all-girl tribute to Pantera mm -hmm. called Cowgirls from Hell. Cowgirls from Hell. Winner! Yeah, yeah when is my band. girl? She subs in my She's band. She awesome. is the shit, She's is she awesome. not? Actually, everyone in that band is the shit. Yeah. That band is they are really good. So Those good. girls are just amazing. Yes. Outstanding. Oh my God, that's going to be a fantastic yeah, it show. Is. Okay. Yeah, it is. And then November 4th, you have a very special show coming up. Tell the yeah, people. This is my, my pet project, if you will. Um, but I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. This is like you better start it. Yeah, it's all going to be fun from here on out. No, this is, I, every year I, I put together an animal rescue event because animal rescue is something that's near and dear to my heart. And I'm actually, uh, just between you and me and everybody listening to this, putting together an actual animal rescue. Um, Fantastic! Yeah, along with some some friends. So, Are you um, working on like your five hundred one three C paperwork and all? Oh my yeah. God! What's your focus going to be? Um, just dogs that need dogs at risk. So dogs. Yeah. So I you're mean, focusing on dogs. But you know, honestly, like if a stray hippo comes along, I'm helping him. Oh my you God! You know, <laughs> I don't I don't specialize, but oh, it's kind of we're focusing hippo. on focusing on dogs. But you know, if there's an animal in need, we're going to help. So basically, like. Looking for dog, like strays that are out, or you know, or strays or injuries dogs on death or, row or you know, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of organizations that actually take dogs out, out of, of death row, and yeah, we're gonna try and help with that. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. So what do you need? Uh, like a location, or you just need people to foster? Well, we're like, gonna need we're work? gonna need fosters for sure. I mm -hmm. don't know that we will have a specific location at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, but we're that'll take time. And we're gonna be working in conjunction with other rescues and stuff. Like, that is amazing. Oh my, them. you yeah. must be so excited. Yeah, it's been something I've been wanting okay, to Okay, but this benefit. This benefit is going to be, um, it's it's for an organization that helps animals that are at risk. Um, animals that are elderly, animals that are elderly. at end of life. Mm. Animals that are special needs and tend to get passed over a lot. That's so, so sad. What's yeah. the name of the organization? Do you know? You know what? I did. And if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. Uh, but I think you wrote it down, right? <laughs> did I? Did leave no pause leave behind. No pause behind. Thank you. My brain is oh, just cheese. Gosh. Uh, but leave no pause behind mm -hmm. animal rescue. We, that is, we, we do a different rescue every single time we do this. Okay. So how do you, be how do you choose the organization? You know, I just pick, usually I pick a local no-kill organization that seems to be in, in greatest need. Gotcha. Um, and if we make enough money, then we can donate to two. Oh, so that works nice. out well. So if we make more than 400, then we'll donate to two. That's mm. amazing. And so what, this is a ticketed event? This is, you pay kind of what you want at the door. Like a donation. Yeah, we okay. just have to pay 150 to the sound guy and everything else goes to the animals. That's wonderful. Okay, so this is November 4th. November 4th. Right, and tell me the venue. It's at the House of Metal at Malone's in Santa Ana. So is the House of Metal, is Malone's donating the... Malone's the room? Is donating the oh room my god, and, that's and amazing. The door guy and everything. Eddie wow. Is, thank you, Eddie. You Yay, Eddie. Wow. Is Eddie the owner? Eddie of is Malone's? the door guy, the, 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 booking, the booking guy for, for House of That's Middle. awesome. He's one half of House of Middle. Half, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a two person. Two guys, yeah. Right on. Yeah, they're awesome. See, there you go. That metal community Good people, man. sticking together again, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And then before we go, oh my gosh, we're getting short on time. I'm oh, no. so sad. I had so much fun with you ladies. Mm -hmm. You're so interesting. I love it. You guys have experienced and done so much and are doing so much. And I love it because I want all I want girls to see this and just get inspired by you. Oh, thank you. Right? Drinking beer. Drinking beer. Yeah, let's do this. I'm watching people drink beer. Oh, I know. <laughs> I don't drink, so I just, I just drink it's, by osmosis. I it's my pre-birthday week, so I'm That's like, you right. know, oh my no. God. celebrating my pre-birthday. Cancer in the house, when's your birthday? July 24th. I'm the 28th girl. Uh, right right here. Right. July, July birthday. <laughs> so you're not on the cusp, you're a Leo? I'm a Leo. I love you even more. 
I'm a Libra, which kind of sounds like Leo. <laughs> well, tell me about Libras. Are we compatible with you? Clearly. Clearly we are. I oh. hope so, because my boyfriend's a Libra. Oh yeah. my goodness! There you go. Oh my goodness! Well, I'm you her guys, boyfriend. Well, you guys have been on a project. You've got to be compatible with not just romantic relationships, yeah. but there's compatibility. Oh, being oh, in a band cool. is like a gigantic marriage. It's Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I'm like, hmm, you, we Libra Leo. We were really Leo. careful about who we picked for this band, because we wanted to make sure we would all get along. I have two Capricorns in my band. What else? What's March? <laughs> See, I don't know. I'm not that. I'm not all good. Maybe. I want to be well versed, but I don't know. I basically yeah. I just know my own. <laughs> not sure about the signs of the guys in that first one, but yeah. we're all we all love Iron Maiden and love we all love other. animals. Yeah. So <laughs> we all love each other. We all get along. Oh, you guys, yeah. that's like Five years. A, yeah. that's a wonderful success story because mm -hmm. it's hard <laughs> to put a band together. Yes. It's hard to keep a band yes. together. We have our band horror Actually, I'm putting out a book of band horror stories. Hey, girl, you like to publish. I do. I, like I love things. it. Have you already published um, books, or I, is this your this first? Is, well, this cookbook will be my first major okay. publish. I'm I'm compiling stories from musicians and sound guys and stuff about band Oh, my God. Stories. I tell people... All the time, because yeah. you know you meet like sound men, especially. Yeah. Oh, Boy, all those guys. don't they hear a lot Thinking of stories? I'm sure everybody's got a story, so I'm compiling. So if you've got a story, send it to me. Do y'all hear that? Any yes. of our metal family? Oh, Bianca says happy birthday. Uh, Thanks, Bianca. Aw, that's so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so if any of you metalheads out there have good stories, share them with Mel Band because nightmares they Gmail. might make it into her book. Mm -hmm. Tell me, I'm sorry, I spoke over you. What is it? Band nightmares at gmail dot com. Yeah. What was that, Rage? What'd she say? I I saw her flash a sign. She flashed me. Uh, no, I was getting ready. <laughs> uh, she might have band nightmares to share. <laughs> I bet she knows she hears a lot of stuff too. So before we go, I know I'm getting down to the wire here, but Mel, you also have another original project I do. that you're involved in. Tell me about that. Well, it's you know it's actually not my project per se. It's my friend Adam's project. Okay. But my friend Adam is this guy. He lives in Vegas, and my friend Shree actually introduced us, and he was like, "You have to hear this guy's stuff." So I listened, and I was like, "I love this." So I bought uh. his CD, and I um, wrote to him, and I said, "Dude, if you ever want to do a duet." Let me know, and we became friends, kind of internet week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like, as is the case exactly. with many relationships today. Well, he lives in Vegas, yeah. and I live in LA, and so he was like, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I guess at some point he heard a video of me and was like, yep, yeah, we're doing a video. And so he, that's um, cool. And so he sent me. He was like, in five minutes, he had the song written, and he sent me the song, and he and it was amazing. So I recorded my part here, and mm -hmm. he recorded his part. He recorded pretty much everything else. In Vegas. in Vegas, and then he has a drummer in North Carolina who did the drums. That is but, bitchin'. But he has two other out. This guy has been putting out music forever, and he just throws it out there for people to hear, and nobody's been paying attention. And then this song got out there, and it's already got two hundred thousand over two hundred thousand oh, views on YouTube. So it's a hit. It's a hit. And, and is that and the one we're gonna listen to right that's now? That's what you're gonna listen oh to. Oh my god! So I'm tell me, about what's it. the name of the song? Um, the song is. Oh my god! Why do you ask me questions in my brain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh god, what is the song called? That's terrible that I can't remember the name of the song. Well, the name, name of your the name of the band is Three Ring. Yeah, the name of the band is Three Ring. I don't okay. that much. Hold on. My brain's not working. Hold on. I'm going to find the name of the song cuz you See, just you sent it to me, me earlier. questions cuz I won't be able to answer them. If you don't ask me questions, I'm really good at answering them. Okay, hold on a second. Well, that kind of the whole radio interview. I, if I <laughs> the question you're going to ask. Wait a minute, wait. And I can just... hear the song in my head and I don't know the name oh, of the see. song. Oh, okay. see. Just sing it. No. Hold on. <laughs> because it just gives me the iTunes link. Can anybody hear me? Ah, I feel better now. Okay, that's what it's called. Can anybody hear me? Continue. Come and this on. is all Adam. All I did was sing on it. So. Adam, da Adam Docs to you. Oh, amazing. no, because, see, because I don't have Apple. What's the name of this song, Rach? Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Oh, play it. <laughs> I hope you like it. Want to hear it? Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs>
And is it the, is it the way that he's putting his music out? Is that why you think it's not he, getting? It's I, if there's something about the male female duet that people really like, and so the next album is gonna have more of that. Yeah. Oh God, my earphones are hot. Yeah, my ears really are hot. Mm -hmm. My ears are covered in sweat. This is like epic, like movie score-ish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's really cool stuff. I wonder how he distributes his music. He just throws it out online. That's it. Damn. He throws it out online, puts it on all the streaming um, things, and then he makes like kind of just videos with an artwork and puts them on YouTube. Oh, it so sounds good. like it. <laughs> sounds good. Oh my god, you're dope. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Look <laughs> at that goddamn voice. Yeah. Such a good song. Uh, he's so good. So he's been sending me like snippets of what he's writing for the new album. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. We're gonna go over a few minutes, but that's okay because there's no show after us. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yay! Nice. Are we still, is there still battery? <laughs> oh, look, Guido, Cosio, I'm digging that song, Mel. You rock. Oh, Guido. Hi, Guido. <laughs> I love Guido. I got your voice. <laughs> We probably have another minute, right? I think that's what she was saying. Is 
it's like a six minute song. It's almost done. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's why she was giving me the three minutes. Yeah, she's supposed to do this in one minute. One minute, okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, okay. So we need to talk about too hot to handle. So is, if she's not managing, who's booking you guys? Because you guys are busy and popular. Um, it's it's kind of been Terry, I think, booking us. And, oh, and and Janine, Gigi it. does it. And sure, we all kind of throw in things. But I guess it takes a village, huh? <laughs> that was something else. It gave Isn't me. He amazing? It gave me chills. It's all Adam, and he. I just he's on it. crazy. He's you guys crazy. need to play live. Well, you know, we're actually, he's writing a third album now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's going to have a lot more stuff like that on it. And we have interest from major management. And we're gonna I probably, bet you do. Yeah, oh. we're going to probably be touring for soon. That time, shit so. is off the Stay hook. Tuned. Girl, you're going to be so busy. <laughs> you'll be writing books. Girl. And you saving the animals. <laughs> and you singing with this band and that band. You are so I'm gonna busy. I'm going to put the animal rescue in the tour bus. And we'll just try oh and with the dogs. There you go. <laughs> you can foster on the road. Best tour bus ever. Ever. <laughs> Aww. So listen, before I know we're going over a few minutes, but I wanted to talk to Mel a little bit about your all-female project that you got going right now, and it's um, tribute to UFO, and it's called Too Hot to Handle, and it's what, five girls? Five girls. Five hot-ass women mm -hmm. that are amazing musicians, and you guys have hit the ground running. What You've been around for what, like a year? Probably or so? about a year, maybe. Okay, okay, because you guys were coming up like last spring. I know at the Rock House a lot you guys were playing, right? So tell me about your members. Give a shout out to all the members in that band. Big shout out to my members. We have Sherry, our drummer, who used to play with the Pandoras. Awesome, rock cool. solid drummer. As a bass player, there's, you know, little old get me. so spoiled. <laughs> rock solid, great drummers. Uh, and then we have Hisako, who is an amazing guitar player. Shreds. Wow. So shredder. She's also in our new project. Oh my god. Sweetest thing ever, too. And uh, then we also have Cherry. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with Sherry, we have Cherry. Cherry and Cherry. Who you guys is have our a thing keyboardist, with names. and she's, we call her the clown boss. Yeah. <laughs> we are the clowns, and she is the clown boss. <laughs> She herds the cats. <laughs> oh, I and love so, it. You need a cat herder. Every band needs a cat herder. Yeah, she is so fabulous and so creative. She, you know, she paints. She makes she's her an own amazing artist. She's, yeah. Yeah, oh my she's goodness. Just, she's an amazing artist. Amazing. And yeah. then, of course, last but not least, our singer Gigi, who is amazing and sweet and funny. And Oh my God, you're just surrounded by talented women. Definitely. You're so lucky to get to share the stage with a bunch of women that you respect and admire. You guys have fun together. It sounds like they're mm -hmm. all really cool chicks. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's possible, people. You hear us out there in Ragland? It is possible. You guys all can make it happen. It can be done. And here is proof right here. And you can see Too Hot to Handle this um, Saturday night at... Uh, PCH Club, Rock House. Long Beach, yeah. In Long Beach. We'll be playing. We'll be celebrating my birthday. Woo oh, yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Mel's a Leo. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all. Come out and support live music, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Rag House Radio, created to empower women in music, entertainment, business, and sports. Hey, peace out. Speaking of... Woo! Wonder Woman in the house. Have a fantastic and productive week. We'll see you real soon. Mwah! <laughs> wow! Mwah!